Hi, Kevin with Prickly Pear Camera here. Today we're going to be talking about the Canon PowerShot SX530 digital camera. I've been in the camera business for the last 15 years and I've personally used over 200 different Canon SX530 cameras. Today we're going to go over the benefits and drawbacks of using this camera, as well as some of the cool feature sets that I really like about it. Of course, the biggest question you might be asking is, is the Canon PowerShot SX530 worth it in the year 2023? Let's find out. But before we get to that, let's go through a quick overview on how to use the SX530 and take some pictures with it. The battery this camera uses is the Canon NB6L battery, which at standard picture quality Canon says will last 200 shots, which I found to be fairly accurate. Most cameras in this size by Panasonic and Nikon are going to last between 2 to 300 shots, so the Canon SX530 is a little bit on the lower end of that. There are also aftermarket batteries um, currently available to replace the Canon NB6L. Um, I personally found that Power Extra makes a pretty good battery. They're not sponsored. The memory card I'm using here is a 64 gig micro SD card and an SD adapter. The Canon SX530 can handle up to a size 128 gigabyte SD card in either SD, SDHC, or SDXC format. Okay, now we're going to talk about some of the features that I really like of the Canon PowerShot SX530. Namely, it's 50x optical zoom. This optical zoom as shown here, fully zoomed out, provides up to a 1200 millimeter equivalent telephoto. One handy hint is if you do or plan on using the anywhere past about 20x on the zoom regularly, I would recommend getting a tripod. It will reduce the shake of the camera if you're holding it. Depending on how much energy drinks or caffeine you've had, that can be quite handy. And when you're fully zoomed out at 50x, keeping the image in the frame can be a challenge, so having it on a steady tripod is quite helpful. Another feature I like of this camera, if you go to the function, is you're able to change the still image aspect ratio. So as you can see here, set to 16 by 9 currently. You could also do 3 by 2, 4 by 3, and 1 by 1. It really allows you to frame the image much easier than trying to just estimate where you would have to crop. Okay, so now we currently have it set to a creative filter, which is the fish eye mode, which is a pretty neat function. You can see that the picture looks quite distorted. It makes for some pretty, pretty neat pictures. Okay, now I've, I've switched on burst mode in the camera. And if you hold the shutter button down, like I'm about to do here, It will take multiple pictures within a very short period of time. It's very handy if you're shooting outdoors, you're birding, uh, you're shooting sports, and anytime you need multiple images in as close a time frame as possible. Another great feature of the Canon PowerShot SX530 is its excellent image stabilization, which is really important in a super zoom camera like this that results in a lot of noise when you're fully zoomed out at 30, 40, 50x. The Canon PowerShot SX530 is what's known as a bridge camera, which is basically a hybrid in between a point-and-shoot camera and a DSLR in terms of the shooting capability. Other bridge cameras uh, on the market currently and comparable to the SX530 are the Nikon Coolpix L840 and the Panasonic Lumix FC70 and FC80.
Okay, here we have the Canon PowerShot SX530 set to video mode. And if you, if you go to the top of the camera, you'll see it's set to the camera icon. And when you go into the camera icon, you can hit function set. And you'll see here there's F HD, HD, and VGA. FHD is full 1080p at 30 frames per second. And it will record up to uh, about 30 minutes of HD content, which is the equivalent of roughly a 4 gigabyte SD card. I'm going to go ahead and film a short clip here. There we go. You will see the seconds is, is going now, and then the red uh, record button indicates that it's filming. Zoom in. and then stop recording. And then to play back the content we just watched, or filmed, hit the play button, and hit play. And that video content can be accessed either directly through the SD card or on the side of the camera, here. On the side of the camera, there's both a USB output and an HDMI output that makes getting the content off of the camera really easy. The LCD on this camera is 461,000 pixels. And it makes recording and looking at the content really easy. Um, one thing that I have here in the settings is LCD brightness. So particularly if you're shooting outdoors, that's one thing you may want to adjust. And all you have to do is hit the, mi the minus and plus. And it makes it easier to see depending upon the lighting conditions. Okay. Now we're going to do a hands-on review of the Canon PowerShot SX530 camera. So out of the box, if you bought it new, it'll be preset to auto. We're going to power the camera on. It'll have the date set there. You can adjust that if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and switch it to 2023. Uh, London, I wish. Paris, no. There we go. Let's do Denver. Okay, now our time is set. Now, if the camera you bought is used or you're interested in buying a used camera, the thing that you can do to get rid of all of the prior owner settings is to go to menu, which is right here. In the lower right, we're gonna hit menu. We're gonna scroll over to the settings function and then scroll up and then you'll see the reset all button there. We're gonna hit that. And that will take it all the way back to factory reset. So now that we've done that, you can see that we're still on auto mode there. And I'm looking at the cameras on the display here. And this is not zoomed out at all. So the first thing that I like to do whenever I'm looking at a new camera is to get really familiar with the camera. And the way to do that, I feel, is to go through all of the menu options to see what the camera is capable of. So we're going to do that real quick. Again, we're in still picture mode here. And we're set at the very top. So digital zoom uh, is set to standard out of the box. A lot of the times I turn that off. Um, digital zoom, in my opinion, has very little uh, need in today's photography world. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to off. AF point zoom is set to off, uh, AF assist beam is set to on, flash settings, uh, red eye correction if you're taking a lot of particularly indoor photography, uh, that can be helpful. I'm going to leave it the way it was for now. Review image after shooting, uh, you can adjust that. So if you take a picture and you want to see it for more than just a second or two on the display, you can adjust it here to the length that you desire. I'm going to keep it set at quick. 
And then again, you're going to hit the lower right button to go back to the menu. Blink detection, you can set to on, it's set to off. Grid lines, you can set to on. It will display grid lines on the pictures. IS settings. Uh, image stabilization. It detects the scene for optimum image stabilization. So if for whatever reason you want to turn it off, say you're using a gimbal or some sort of tripod that helped you with stabilization, you can turn it off there. I'm going to go ahead and leave it set to the way that it was. Uh, display area, you're able to adjust there. Auto settings, uh, you're able to find the lost subject that you were taking a picture of. Uh, and then auto zoom, if it sees a face, it will adjust and there's some additional functionality there upper body, etc. Date stamp. This is kind of a cool feature. So it's set to off out of the box, but you're actually able to put a date stamp on all of the pictures that you take. Some cameras have that functionality, some don't. The Canon SX530 does have that functionality. Okay, we went through all of the camera settings there. And now we're going over to the general camera settings. So mute, if you wanted to mute, you can hear that little noise there. Now there's not any noise. Now there's noise. Now there's not. Now there's noise. Now there's not. You get the idea. Uh, hints and tips, I have I guess it's set to on. I never even noticed that. Uh, you can set it to off. I'll go ahead and set it to off. Adjust the date and time. So you're able to do that on the initial setup and also within the settings of the camera itself. Time zone, likewise. Lens retraction, so if you're taking pictures and you forget and you have the, the lens zoomed out, not only is it wasting the battery life, but uh, the further the lens is zoomed out, the more likely it is to have issues if it falls or gets jostled. So you're able to adjust the lens retraction time here. It's set to one minute currently. Uh, eco mode, on and off, that just helps with battery life. It adjusts the display brightness, among other things. LCD brightness. Here's the lowest, there's the highest. If you're in a darker situation, that's when you're notice that more, but you can definitely see it here. Startup image, uh, it's currently set to on, it could also be off. I believe you can customize that. So formatting the memory card can be done here in the settings. And you can see this is my 64 gig card. So it's automatically gonna format when you click okay. And it'll give you a warning, and then you press OK again. And that's how long it takes to format a 64 gig card. Granted, there wasn't very much in there, but it should only take a couple seconds. <coughs> File numbering, you're able to adjust it there. Um, this is kind of cool if you are taking a lot of pictures and you want to monitor pictures that you've taken from a few days ago uh, by the number count of the file number, you're able to uh, edit it there. So I lost it there. But you can see if you lose it, you just hit the menu in the lower right, right here, and you can go back there. Let's get back down to where we're at here. Uh, create folder, that's just to create a new folder. It's set to monthly, which is fine. Units, you're able to adjust from uh, meters and centimeters to feet and inches. Video system, this is kind of a cool feature that not all cameras have. Uh, you're able to adjust it. Out of the box for a US model Canon SX530, it's gonna be set to NTSC, which is the US, uh, which is the US, I guess I should adjust the, the time off there. NTSC, you're able to adjust the video system. The video system out of the box, stop that. The video system out of the box is going to be set to NTSC, which is the US format. Uh, PAL is uh, European. So if you're wanting to show content or record content for a different market, you're able to adjust it there. Wi-Fi settings just below that. You're able to uh, use this camera with Wi-Fi. 
and go back there. Uh, it doesn't matter. Language, not only could you adjust it in the uh, initial setup of the camera, but you're able to adjust it here. There's quite a few languages available. I believe 30. Uh, we are going to set it to Espanol. So if you get a camera that is set to a different language and you don't know what to do because you don't understand the language, all you have to do to remember is hit menu, go over to that settings, scroll down, and when you get to idioma, or if it's a different language, you can see the picture with the person talking there. All you have to do is hit that again and we'll switch it back from Spanish to English. Okay, and then the last one there is the reset all button. So if I had changed something and I didn't want it and I wanted to change it back to reset, you just hit reset default, and then it's back to the original settings of the camera. So back to the original question that I asked, is the Canon PowerShot SX530 still a good buy in the year 2023? I would say overall, yes, it's still a good value for the money, particularly if you can find it in the 100 to $150 price range for a used model. Uh, again, you can find uh, pretty good deals through Facebook Marketplace, eBay, sometimes Amazon, uh, and then locally, of course, as well. Better yet, if you have a friend or a family member that has it and is willing to give you a good deal, uh, then I would definitely spring on it. One of the reasons why I still recommend this camera, even though it's eight years old, is it's a vast improvement over really any compact point-and-shoot model uh, in regards to its zoom capability, and definitely uh, an advancement over iPhone or Android camera phone uh, capabilities. The 50x optical zoom of the SX530 is the real deal. Uh, the color accuracy is spot on, and I wouldn't he hesitate to recommend it.